All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another quick tutorial on getting Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots running on the newer versions of RPCS3. I previously did another video a few months back just showing how to do this and it involved getting an imported patch and things of that nature, getting this game running. You don't really have to do that this time around. It's a little more streamlined, a little more straightforward. And today we're gonna show you how to get that done. First things first, you're going to want to make sure that you have the proper PKG and the proper RAP file for Metal Gear Solid 4. You must have both files installed. First, we're going to click on file. Then we're going to go over to the tab that says install packages, wraps, and EDAT. Now, once we do that, you're going to see the PKG file and the wrap file. I always install the, the small one first, which is the wrap file. So highlight it, click open, then scroll back over to the file tab. Click on the same one again, install packages, wraps, and EDATs. Click on that. And then this is the big one. You're gonna click on the large one. Should be around 26 to 28 gigabytes in size. Click open. It's gonna ask you this. Do you wanna install this package? Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots. Hard drive game. It shows you the game serial ID and also the version. I have version 2.0. That does make a difference and we'll show you, I'll show that later on in the video. So then, yep, I'm just letting you know here that version 2.0 click yes and for the sake of the video i sped this up eight times so just be patient let your pc do its thing this little thing will pop up here i didn't click on any of them i, I did some of this stuff later the pre-compiled caches i did that later on on my own but for now just click ok and then we're going to move on to the second part of this video okay so once your game is fully installed you'll see it right here on the list we're going to right click on it and you're gonna scroll down to where it says, create custom configurations from default settings. I know there's a global settings, but for the sake of the video, we're going to click on create custom configuration from default settings. Okay, once that menu pops up, you're gonna see a couple different tabs up here. There's only a few of them that we need to mess with. And the first tab we're gonna click on is GPU. You're gonna scroll over to the uh, frame limit and we're going to completely lock it to 60. Not 50, not 30, not auto, not the PS3 native, not infinite. It's going to be 60. You have to put it at 60. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to the uh, Z call accuracy. Click on this and we're going to click on relaxed. All right. Once we do that, our next step is going to move over to the additional settings. We're going to tap on the right color buffers box. Everything else can stay off at stock. Like I said, I did miss something here. Um, I missed the resolution scaling. If you just want to get the game going and just make it run, if you don't have a powerful computer, you can leave the resolution scale. It's, that's the box right in the middle underneath default resolution. You can leave it at 1280 by 720 if you'd like. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna run this at 4k scaled at 4k because it just looks really good when it's been scaled to that resolution Next thing we're gonna click on is the advanced tab We're gonna go over to where it says core and Right Underneath it's the fourth one down is called it says accurate RSX reservation access Check that little box Next we're gonna move over to where it says firmware libraries still under the advanced tab don't go anywhere just yet and you can see it right there we're going to scroll to the very very bottom there's a particular box we need to check off i couldn't find it at first then i remembered that it actually is here you don't have to actually search for it but at the very very bottom we're going to scroll down it's the second to last one libvdec.sprx okay and then from there we're going to go to the rsx fifo accuracy tab by default, it's set to fast. We're actually gonna change it to atomic. All right, so click on atomic. And we're done with this uh, advanced tab for now, but we're gonna revisit something really quick. We're gonna change the resolution scale as I mentioned earlier in the video. I actually kind of forgot about it as I was going through this. So just if you want, just click apply. Right click on MGS4 again, change custom configuration. Go to your GPU tab and then right here, leave the default resolution as recommended 1280 by 720. If 
you want to play it in a scaled 4K, you need to change it to 300%. 3840 by 2160. And once you do that, go ahead and click on the apply button once again. Now we just have one last thing we need to do before we actually go to uh, start compiling the game. Uh, we need to actually apply the unlock FPS patch. So once again, you're going to right click on Metal Gear Solid 4. You're going to click manage game patches. Right there near the top of the list. So we're going to click it right here. You should see a couple of patches already here. If you have an ultra wide monitor or um, an ultra wide, it's like a super ultra wide monitor. There is a 32 by nine aspect ratio for both game and cutscenes. You cannot do both. The game only allows you to do one or the other. I have a 21 by nine. The last time I played through this game, I played through the entire thing in ultra wide, a 21 by nine aspect ratio. And it looks really good. I, I will say the game looks really, really good. Unfortunately, I don't have a 32 by nine. That'd be really awesome to have one of those. The only patch we really need to worry about is the unlock FPS. So check mark box, the unlock FPS box, click apply, then save. And once you've done that, you can read the notes here. Uh, click apply and save. Next part is the longest part. Uh, Pre-compiling the shaders. It took about an hour or so to get done. But here's the game running.
All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful and informative to you. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave a comment down below. I would appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Hit the thumbs down if you didn't enjoy it. If you really want to be a super awesome person, uh, subscribe to the channel. I really like making these videos, and I hope I can get better at doing this. And uh, I hope you guys love this game as much as I do, and you can get it running ASAP. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.